uh, this is Community Matters. I'm going to talk about the media. We're going to talk about how COVID has affected the media in our community, namely KITV. Uh, so Jason, general manager, uh, and uh, uh, Janice, Janice Jin um, is the uh, news, news director. This is very important. This is the heart of the station. And the first thing we want to do is get some graphics going, because after all, you know, video is all about graphics. So Jason, why don't you uh, go through the video you wanted to show us and sort of give us the parameters of what the station is interested in these days. Okay, sure, absolutely. So the first thing I think we're gonna show here is a, a picture of the, um, was it the, gosh, Living Room Live? Oh, Name Apono. So we, we wanted to definitely be a partner in, 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 in recognizing people in the community who are doing, going above and beyond in, in the sense of whether they're donating PPE or sewing masks for our healthcare workers. Uh, it's just a platform just to basically acknowledge and recognize people who, who are contributing then to our community. Uh, the next one that I think we have available to, wanted to show you guys was um, the, uh, I don't have the order, Jay. Sorry. Can okay, you just put the next one up. Okay, uh, well, this we have Living Room Live. So Living Room Live is a platform in conjunction with iHeartRadio that we worked on. And obviously a lot of artists can't be performing in live venues during this COVID time. And we wanted to bring that music back to the living rooms, back to our, our Hawaii audience. And uh, also partner up with various nonprofits that need money to continue what they're doing, whether it is our artist fund for uh, the Henry Capono's Foundation or working then with the um, Hawaii Food Bank to raise funds for them. So it was a win-win situation where we get to bring in artists and allow them to perform, be recognized, and also raise money for the community. Great, so. great. It's all about community, isn't it? Always is. The television station serves in that role, for sure. Absolutely, in the fabric. So uh, what's the next one? Bring up another one. All right, oh, this one okay. is interesting. So Aloha, is Give Aloha of Every Day is uh, underwritten by Levin Yamani and Soldner, and it's a program that allows them to uh, help nonprofits who don't necessarily have a voice or a platform to educate as to what their needs are currently. So we, we worked with Levin Yamani and Soldner to put this platform together, and we've helped out with the Hawaii Food Bank, um, Hawaii uh, Farm Table programs, um, and a lot of other nonprofits here that gave them then a platform to talk in high profile positions. Obviously, when the television viewing audience is higher than ever right now, so. Yeah, that's a win-win-win. And uh, Levitt Yamani Soldier has been uh, one of your supporters, advertisers for a long time. And Truly. Uh, that's why everybody knows their name, everybody. It's uh, interesting yes. how that works. Uh, do we have more? Oh, there we go. Coronavirus has got to be an important news item. I'll let Janice sort of kind of tell you a little bit more about this graphic. Well, yeah, that's, and that's the, the thrust of our show. But let's look at that from the point of view of news selection, right? I mean, the big thing for a news director is to make a list of the news stories that could be covered and then, you know, select the ones that will be covered and, and allocate the amount of time for each one of them. So obviously, uh, since what, February, March, uh, coronavirus has been a major news story. Um, tell us how that has gone for you. Jay, we have actually been covering coronavirus since the middle of January. Good when for it you. became an issue in China, knowing that we have a lot of visitors here as an international port, I said, oh my God, this is a big, big, big deal. So I like to believe that at KITV, we were actually about two weeks ahead of everybody else. And then the state started talking about, you know, everybody started panicking over coronavirus. Then the travel stopped. And then everybody got crazy, right? Everybody wanted a test. So in that time, we were able to start talking to, we had people here in Honolulu who were from Wuhan. They were visiting one of our schools. We tried to get a hold of them, like, What's it like when you know everybody in your town is like locked down? What's it like about those trying to keep perspective about what was going on overseas and how that affects us? People stop coming here. People stop wanting to come here. Our tourism starts to get hurt. And people are like, you know, across America is like, oh, we don't know if we're going to do a shutdown. 
And then we find out that we get these tests. The test kits don't work. Now that's an indictment on the federal government and Hawaii was very self-righteous about it. And the public, I'm not sure, was as sympathetic about it. So our responsibility is to say, hey, this stuff is going on, man. You got to know about it. And the government is trying to do something about it. And then public, as you know, gets impatient, right? We want the test tomorrow. Well, CDC screwed up. They gave us the wrong test. Twice, not once, but twice. So we're like, okay, we finally got our stuff together. Is looking ahead down the road. What do people want to know? The first thing we did was we created a half hour special for six o'clock noon at the back end of our special. We're going to answer your questions as best we can. We got very lucky in having great guests. We had the Department of Health director on, not every week, but just about every week. And then the governor started having these press conferences. So that helped enhance our storytelling. And then all of a sudden we start closing everything down, everybody having a panic. And for those who are uh, not ha hair challenged, we're all upset about can't get my hair done. I'm like, really? This is the last thing that's really important. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. We're talking I, about being in the middle of the community. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They're like crazy about it. So over time, we just have to reflect what our community is looking at and put in perspective when to get crazy and when not to get crazy and ask the hard questions. If you recall when the Department of Health kind of like killed somebody, and said the guy died for coronavirus and then back down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're wrong. And we're like, how do you make that mistake? Hello? <laughs> Everybody's in a panic. Well, so are I, you talking about fear out there? Everybody wondering whether they're in the line of fire. You're talking about great public interest. And you're talking about news that keeps on coming every day, every minute. It's a, it's a, it's a media delight in that way, isn't it? You know, I have to be honest with you. I'm a, as a media hound, Yes, it's a great delight. It's great when you can ask the governor, the mayor. It's great to see the mayor and the governor not see eye to eye. Like, who's going to push who first to make the decision, right? They, that's what everybody's talking about. What I find hilarious, I shouldn't use the word hilarious. We have sister stations across the country who are in markets that are not like Hawaii. So when they, whether it's riots or coronavirus, for example, when coronavirus is going crazy on the East Coast in New York, if I lived in New York, I would be scared as you know what. But when don't, I live in Hawaii. So they're like, well, what about this? And what about this? I go, really, people? We have 17 deaths, less, less than 700 positive cases. Hawaii is doing a really great, really great. But I also tell my friends on the mainland, we're doing great here. Don't come here. We don't want your kind. We don't want you to come to Hawaii. Sorry. They're like, can I stay at your house? No. No. Don't come do over. it. <laughs> don't come here. Don't want you here. Yeah. So I think the rest of the West, the West of the East Coast is like behind us because we started covering this in January. Well, that's that we, to your credit. That's, that's really a fabulous thing, I must I, say. Because it really it wasn't up. out there. It wasn't out there until... Right. Um, you know, the end of January at the earliest, and, uh, you know, even, even the, the White House didn't get onto it until, you know, about 10 days into January, and every day counts, so you were way ahead of the curve, way ahead. It was, a, it was very strange that I was actually on a trip in Washington at the very beginning of March, probably the last person to ever traveled, you know, so even at that time, they were starting to get really serious in Washington. Having said that, that my counterparts on the East Coast, who, who are also news directors trying to cover this, they're like two weeks behind in the panic. That's what I say, they're two weeks behind. When we know how to wear a mask, because our culture, we've been doing it with every Japanese tourist that comes to, comes to Hawaii, right? It's normal. <laughs> so we know how to make masks. We know how to do that industry. I have news directors on the East Coast going, oh my God, I have to figure out how to make a mask. <laughs> so really easy, go online. <laughs> so they're, they're kind of behind us, but you know, they have a right to be behind us. They have thousands of people who are dying. I was watching this from the very beginning when I could see the numbers growing. I get frustrated. I've lived on the mainland. 
So I get frustrated when everybody is like clustering and having a good time at the park and at the beach. And I'm like, we're going to see another wave. And oh, I get yeah. about it. Well, I, you know, I would, you know, I want to, I want to circle back a after we talk to Jason for a bit um, on the question of how the protests play into all of this okay. as a news matter. So Jason, uh, here you are, you're a business like any other. I, I suppose you're an essential business as the media is, um, but this has to have a profound effect on your management of the station. Can you talk about that? As relates to the protest? Sorry. As relates to COVID. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, well, first and foremost, I think what we need to do is make sure that we are taking every precaution to ensure that our employees are safe during this crazy time. So we, we kind of almost immediately do, between Janice and I, we kind of implemented a work from home, if you can, kind of situation. And the technology kind of didn't follow it after the direction. So as we were kind of figuring it out, I think what our, was the coolest part was that our audience was very forgiving in understanding that the technology didn't quite catch up with what we wanted to do in to ensure the safety of our employees. Uh, but we, we, we've gotten at this point to the point that we can operate pretty smoothly working remotely. And this is with uh, both producers uh, working from home, some anchors actually reporting and anchoring from home, our, our MMJs or reporters that are on the street kind of working outside the building to the ex much extent as possible, um, sales departments all working from home, sales admin all working from home, uh, to the extent where we, got, we probably had less than 10 people in the building at any given time. Wow, that's, that, that's re remarkable and, and it, it demonstrates flexibility. But that, that is, uh, you know, the core of being media. You have to react to things quickly. You have to catch the wave all the time, and, and including when the wave is, is heading at you. Um, For sure. So, it, it, you know, you talk about uh, things that a lot of businesses have done, um, but it also strikes me that some of the things you've done, some of those nimble changes are actually changes you might consider on a long-term basis. Have you, have you thought any of them would uh, be useful on a long-term basis? It's so funny. We had a conversation with someone just today, in fact, about who might come and work with us about that exact sort of situation moving forward, which, you know, six months ago was like, you want to do what remotely? You want to do this remotely? We would look at you like you were crazy. But understanding then that the audience is sort of understands that the dynamic of things and, and we can still put together a solid newscast, not necessarily you know, the pretty show, but, but definitely a solid newscast and bring them the information in a you know, informative and yet um, engaging way. Uh, and, and that has more to do with the content than it has to do with the, with the flash of the show, if you will. And I think that's the basis of us being able to continue to be successful in getting the message on our news out every single day. Yeah, well, let me offer a couple of thoughts on that from my observation. And one is that, um, you know, uh, it's, it's nothing uncommon to see somebody um, being interviewed at home. Uh, right. that's, that's commonplace now. Um, and furthermore, uh, a few weeks ago, it was really mm, problematic about production values. Uh, you know, the light would be wrong and the angle would be wrong. And the sound would be mm, squishy and, and, and then it would glinch, uh, you know, and, and um, gee, but everybody was tolerant to that. I, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the viewing audience, hey, we're in a crisis, we're gonna be tolerant. And then something started to happen. People started to invest in little microphones. They started to invest in home green screens. They, they started learning more about how to achieve production values. I mean, both the individuals out there who may have a lot of exposure, uh, but also the staff inside the studio, the production staff. Uh, has that been your experience? For sure, yeah. definitely. I, I'll let Janice go. Go ahead, Janice. Yeah, go ahead, Janice. I think that we, in our, in our edict to uh, work at home, adapt to the applications that we could do, using technology to our advantage, we absolutely did that. What you're, you're, you are very astute because I experienced basically the same thing with everybody going at home, doing their thing. Stuff wasn't exactly right. So we tried to get them the equipment they needed to have a better setup. And then all of a sudden, I don't know why, all of a sudden one day, I started getting emails from people who said, hey, can you make your audio better? This is viewers now. Can you get, 
Can you make your audio better? Can you get your video cleaner? <laughs> what do you guys? I thought, wow, what a discerning audience that is. Now for the workers, you know, some people want to invest on their own thing. Like I really want a nice light so I look good. So I'm yeah. going to buy light, you know? So we, <laughs> some people bought lights. I have one person who bought themselves a teleprompter so they could actually have a teleprompter at home. I'm like, I didn't ask you to do that. I appreciate that you did. But people are starting also learning about their own technology. And so technology has really been our friend in this scenario. I encourage it, um, not necessarily to my full expense, but, you know, people want to trick out their own home. I go, you really want to turn your house into a studio? Okay. Okay. But, you know, given the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the acceptance by the public mm -hmm. of uh, a different, say, a different production quality when this happens, uh, right. increasingly, I mean, everybody's getting used to it. It's a, it's a new normal if you want to right. use that term. Um, this means this means that anybody, you or us for that matter, uh, can use this, the Zoom approach, uh, the remote approach <laughs> to reach people. <clears throat> people you might not have been able to reach given the parameters of production quality before. I mean, you could talk to a newsmaker in Singapore, no problem. Exactly. You might not have done that before. You might have had to wait for footage, you know, to be transferred electronically or, or even by by transportation but now you can go around the world because nobody really nobody really makes the distinction um it's okay that you're getting you know less than less than perfect production values so why not go around the world you can be if you like um a national news gatherer be, an international Absolutely. news gatherer because of that it opens new doors for you doesn't it it opens tremendous doors to it and that's what's great about the media we can bring the voices in. But I'd like to point out that, you know, while technology, to have technology means you have to be a have and not a have not. So I want to do an example, a couple, I think it was last week, the mayor did a little Facebook thing and he had all the, not the mayor, the governor, and he had all the other mayors in the little boxes. And then we actually carried that live on our air. I can't tell you how much the public appreciated that because they don't have Zoom technology. They don't have a cell phone with unlimited data. And they were so happy to see their island represented and listening to their lawmaker talk about what's gonna happen in the community. So what I as a broadcaster always worry about is the people who don't have the means and access to what we have. You know that we carry other programming. So whenever the governor has a press conference, for example, we will carry it live. And sometimes that interferes with soap operas. When you, <laughs> inter when you interrupt the soap opera, people go crazy. Priorities. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, I would have people who call me at 1230 and say, is there going to be a press conference today? Just viewers. And I go, well, the governor hasn't said yes. Well, the governor needs to speak. I go, if he speaks, it'll be 230. So they want to see the lawmakers. And I think that is the biggest role that we have played for our community, because I believe that everybody should have access to having this information, not just people who have a cell phone, not just yeah. people who you know what's You know what's interesting about that? The lawmakers you talk about have never had this kind of intense experience before. And they oh, may sure. not know how to actually pull it off. That is to be candid, to be complete, to be, you know, to inform the public and calm the public. It's a big problem. I mean, it's a real problem in Washington, but it's a problem everywhere, really. You're absolutely right. You're so absolutely let, me, let me shift back to you for a minute, Jason. You know, the, all these changes, um, the changes in um, doing the news, uh, the changes in where, where the staff is located and where they can work or not work. I mean, this has to affect the KITV from a business point of view. And I'm, I'm really curious to know how that has been. For example, have you had to put anybody on furlough uh, or terminate any, any employee, employees or services or contractors, uh, or, or does it all still work fine? And um, uh, you know, uh, how about advertisers, uh, especially the ones who had to go out of business or can't operate? Uh, what do you do with them? Uh, so can you talk about the economics for a minute? Sure. This, this, this is still unfolding clearly without anything 
defined yet yet initially when this first came on we had some initial cancellations in terms of advertising and whatnot um uh and, and if you think about the fully completed month of then april we were i think the business in general was down about total revenue is down about 40 percent and obviously for a long-term play that we can't operate at that level but you know it was, it was really a lot, lot of pride of working for lily broadcasting in that they basically said, you know, just take care of our employees. They kind of assured everybody we're, we're, we're good. So just, just keep going, keep doing your job, stay help, stay focused on your health and your, uh, your families and, and your job, obviously in the moving forward standpoint. But, um, and so, so that, that sort of confidence to let everybody focus on getting the, what they need to get done. Uh, it changes a lot about the accountability in terms of how people function and in a remote way. So, you know, communication and, you know, these technology, like these Zoom calls that we're doing even this interview on, enables us to kind of look still people in the eye and understand where they are and where they're taking their business or taking their roles that's going forward. Um, and so I, I think it's super important that the camera aspect is included in, you know, the, the, these, this, these technologies that allow us to kind of get more of a read than just their tone of voice when I'm talking to them. So, yeah. Um, Definitely, de definitely impactful overall to our business. We're learning to adapt through it. And it's really interesting to see the, the type of businesses that are using our platforms, whether it's on the television side or digital side, really seeing it as an opportunity to, for them to grow and grab you know, market share in, in the situation, or at least it, depending on the mission, obviously, or, or gain um, help with whatever community initiative they have, because obviously we have clients of all sorts. Um, but it was initially that shock, I think, of everybody cancel, canceling their advertising wasn't necessarily because they were scared necessarily. They needed to change their messaging and they needed to include in their commercials, you know, a message of understanding and empathy going forward and not just, hey, we're this, this car is on sale today, you know, or so get this important. loan today. This is about, you know, we're here for you and, and for them as a corporate message to get out the fact that they understand the situation that they're in right now and that it, it, you've seen that across the board. Uh, but, both on the national and the local level. But you were encouraging them to do that, to get current. Huh? Oh, definitely. Especially for our smaller businesses that don't have an ad agency necessarily put their messaging together. Definitely talking about uh, sm smaller, uh, you mean, take out businesses and, 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 with, and to encourage and to put, modify their commercials so that we show that uh, what, what the current offering might be given what all that is going on. So help them stay current. And it looked like it's not, you're just being obtuse in a situation because that's what it would seem like if you didn't modify your message. Yeah, it looks like you're using old footage and you, you haven't caught up and all that. You know, but what you, what you say, <clears throat> Jason, really, uh, you know, opens to me this question. You know, we, we have in Washington right now, and I, I wouldn't say <coughs> well, to some extent it happens here, but in, we have in Washington dysfunctional government. We have, we have a, an executive that's dysfunctional. Um, we have a Congress that's dysfunctional. A lot of people don't have confidence in the in the courts, right up to the Supreme Court anymore. Uh, we've had you know a number of discussions on think tech about those things, um, and that leaves uh, you know the need for somebody soft and warm and altruistic and honest and earthy and you know somebody who you want to warm to. And who is that? That's the media. That's the media. That's the media nationally and. To a significant extent, it's the media locally. So all of a sudden, you're different, in my view, in the eyes of the viewer, in the eyes of the public. They come to you because they need they need that support. They need to talk to somebody they believe in. And uh, do you feel that happening on your side also? I, I think we be, definitely became more, and John is going to color, add color to this too. I think we definitely became more relevant in everybody's daily life. Now, still. You know, the, our research showed that people spend an average of six hours plus per day with their television set with various news and in, uh, entertainment programming. Um, I think that has increased a lot more. Before, when you think about when prime time was, it was anywhere between, you know, six and 11 o'clock every night when most people were home watching TV. Right now, it's prime time all day and all night because everybody's basically still at home. So it's, it's really yeah, interesting. Yeah. I'm not Janice, if you have another thought on that. Yeah, no, no well, pressure, no pressure, Janice, no pressure. Um, no, no, but, no. That... but I would say that, you know, in our sense of responsibility, this is what I try to feel in the newsroom, is this idea that we are here to serve the public. We are here to make them feel assured. We are here to tell them what we know and not to lie and not to 
not to color, if you will, the story. If people are dying, people are dying. You don't want to be rude about it, but just say, hey, you need to do this. But also give words of assurance, if you spoke about, Jay, about words of assurance that say, we're warm and fuzzy, we're here to help you. We want to honor those people in our Nabeapono, uh, if you will, mm, feature, yeah. feature those characters who have, the way I wrote the copy was, who, un, who just on their own gave to the community. Not they were, they were not hired by you to go do a program. They were hired by their own heart to want to help make masks, want to give something. And that we should honor them because that's Hawaii. That's what we do. And our responsibility, I felt at KITV, was to tell that story, mm. to not hold it back. So then we get to the hard question. Okay. You know, a question that always besets a television station locally or nationally. Um, it's do you tell the people what the people want to know, what to know about, or do you tell the people what they should know about? Okay, you want to educate them or just satisfy their curiosity. Um, and, and there's a big issue right now, and I'll tell you the issue, and you, you can use it to, you know, to ex express your thought about it. As of right now, so we have the protests in the street. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to know about the protests. It's, it's like the protest show. It's, a, it's an eight-day show so far. Um, and, you know, the national media is just doing it right up. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's not important. It's very important. However, uh, all the oxygen is going there. At the same time, COVID has not ended. COVID is still keep killing people at the rate of thousands of people every day. Yes. Um, but, the, but the oxygen is on the protest. And you as a news media and your counterparts as news media is in every station, most local and national, um, you know, have to make the choice of how are you going to allocate your time? What is the public going to like? What are they going to come for? And also what they really need to know to be educated citizens, you know, and ed educated members of the electorate too. Um, how do you make those choices? How are you making them now? Well, I think it's really important for the media, any media, to try to put perspective on what is going on. So the why we had actually, from a corporate standpoint, there was a lot of discussion, as I said, we have sister stations across the country. So there was like all this concern about, about rioting. And they have riot and they have COVID and they got all the problems that they got masks. They got all of it. I said, you know what? I, we have to put in perspective what this rioting is about. It is not just about rioting. It, there's a deeper seated issue. And then the question for Hawaii is, why is that issue not big to us? And I find it fascinating. I don't know the answer. And I'm always trying to find that answer. Why don't we have? When Floyd happened, we had no protest. Then we had a protest on Saturday. From my vantage point as a news geek, I go, yay, a protest. So <laughs> then, okay, what are they saying? What are the protesters saying? Why are they there? And yeah, we're not knocking heads. We're not fighting with police. We're not doing any of that stuff. But what is the meaning here? My responsibility, I think, as the media is to try to give you that meaning and in some ways put in perspective why Hawaii is not rioting. Yeah, we have to ask these questions. We have to see ourselves as part of the, of, of the firmament, you know, right. against the context of national and international events. So now, we, we only have a couple of minutes left. Let me, let me, let me ask, say, yeah, go ahead. Coronavirus. We have been trying to also keep the riot story kind of related, not related, but we're not ignorant to the fact that it has an impact on coronavirus. I'm very concerned in the big picture, you talk about people dying, that we're gonna see this another proliferation in all of these major towns in the East Coast. I think it's gonna happen. This is, this is different than quarantine. You know, this is gonna happen. People are so passionate and standing next to each other. They're gonna infect each other. And then what are we gonna have? We're gonna have Hawaii visitors. And then we're gonna arrest them and send them back home. That's what we do. So, I mean, I think the coronavirus is going to be a subtext right now because there is no leadership right now to quell the rioting going on in America. Yeah, and all of that uh, touches the economy. Exactly. Um, and the economy is another huge story. Let me, I'll go on record to say that if you have hundreds of thousands of people across the country in protest, they're not working. 
Correct. They're not, they're not involved in the economy. It's something else. Sure. So you have a secondary effect there. But let me, let me turn to a last issue, which I think is you know, important in our time. It, perhaps it's more important with the high profile um, television media on the mainland, but it's also important with you. And it's the First Amendment. Um, you know, we, we have an administration there now that uh, doesn't feel the same way that Americans have felt for the last couple of hundred years about the First Amendment. Uh, and we have uh, insults uh, going back and forth. We have um, uh, a kind of um, something filtering out there into the community. I mean, for example, it really troubles me uh, that the police are also beating up on the media. And uh, for that matter, some of the protesters are disrespecting the media. The media has lost its sancro, san, sacro sanctuary, so to speak, <laughs> as First Amendment because of things this administration has said. So how do you feel about that, Jason? Uh, how is it affecting you? How, what, what do you think about that going forward? The First Amendment is so critical, not only to the media itself, but to the whole country. What are your thoughts? It's a big question. I, and, and you said you have a couple minutes, but, but, but basically I think I don't have an answer for you, aside from the fact that there just needs to be, a, as a media, we try not to make our personal opinions known because we're supposed to be, we should be as even keeled and present the information and let people make their own decision. So it's hard for me to kind of inject my own opinions into this without mm, affecting how we as a journalism organization, as a, as a, as a news organization going forward. But um, there is, like you said, a lack of leadership in that way. There's a lack of respect, not just for the for for journalists as an institution, but many of the other institutions. It's not limited to journalism; it's across the board, where there's a general lack of respect of of what the roles and and the protections that each institution is supposed to offer to the next one, and, and as a watchdog or otherwise. So, mm, I stand with you know our, our brothers and sisters, journalists and brothers and sisters on the mainland. And, and, and say, you know, as an industry, as a, as the role that journalism play, journalists play in our market and in our country, that we need to protect them more. And I think we're seeing a lot of that all the way, 5,000 miles away from Hawaii, where we are, it's hard for me to kind of raise my, you know, arm with them, but I'm there with them in spirit. And I definitely would do whatever I can to protect it. And if that was to happen here, we'd do the same thing. There are plans. If, I don't think you're going to see the kind of riots you see in Hawaii that you've seen on, on a lot of the big cities in the, on the mainland. Uh, but we're ready, if that happens, we're gonna protect our people and make sure that they are um, empowered to continue to do their job without risking their personal safety. Again, that's our job as their employers of, of, of these uh, fine journalists here that work for KITV. And sometimes government does not hold itself accountable. There's only yeah. one organization that's dedicated to that, that's the media. For and, sure. um, that you know, looking forward, that's that has to be that has to be central in the preservation of our democracy. So, one one last question for you, uh, and that is, uh, how do you see the news evolving? How do you see the the news going forward? I mean, I know that news directors are always looking ahead. They're trying to figure out. They're they're speculating maybe, but they're trying to figure out what's coming down the pike. Um, what kind of news and what the priorities are and how it fits in in the mosaic uh, that you offer. Uh, so Janice, what, you know, what, what are you thinking about these days? Because we're in a big tumult now, but right. you must have ideas about where it's all going. I, I have a lot of opinions, but I will keep my First Amendment opinions to myself to say <laughs> I will fight for my people. But having said that, what I look out in the future, and I appreciate your recognition that part of my job is to look out in the future is to look at I'm concerned about this community and it's really about employment well we have focused so much heartache and crying and yelling at the unemployment office and process we're not we really are not looking at employment as an issue because for example I went out to get picked I picked up food last night so I asked the, little, the woman who brought me the food, and I said, so tell me what's going on inside your restaurant. She said, we're getting ready to open on Friday. I said, how many people got hired? Only seven people for their staff got rehired. Ooh. Seven. 
that means what? Maybe 20 people did not get a job. There's going to be 20 people on the street on Friday with no job. That is the story. How do you find a job when there is no job? What skills do you have to do in a job interview that's going to get you that one job that everybody's trying to get? And it very well may be to be a, to be a barista and not high paying. Yeah, well, but you know, it's a, it, it's a how-to thing. You know, right. on, on YouTube, the most popular sites on YouTube are the ones that answer how-to. So how to get a job, how to start a business, um, how, to, how to get food without money. Uh, and on and on, you know, and, and this, somebody has a question. Everybody has a question like that. And I, mean, and I know that your viewers would like to hear those shows. But I'm looking at the future and that's where our future is right now in this community. That's where I think the media, we can play some role in educating, helping, mentoring, whatever. I'm not saying you run a job bank. I'm just saying, how do I help you get your next job, Jane? Right. What's right. the right answer when somebody asks you whatever the question is? So be you know, Jason, Janice is really pretty terrific. Have you noticed? Oh, that? I'm very, yeah. I just, <laughs> I just, I want to ask you one last question, Jason. Okay, is, sure. You know, KITV, you're, you're in competition with others um, uh, and everybody more than, more than before even uh, relies on, on uh, local TV news and uh, entertainment, whatever the content is. Um, what would, what message would you leave? You started doing this when we went through the slides, but what message would you leave to your viewers uh, and your advertisers at KITV? How do you see it going forward? What is your, you know, your, your connection with them now? Mm -hmm. We look as to our, we, we want to be there. We are the community partner. We're their voice, as you said, in terms of getting information if they have an issue that they do want to bring up to us that we can help investigate for them as well. Be, you know, broadly so for broader issues, obviously. Um, we, we will do that, I think, for them. Uh, for our clients, know that if our job at this point is to make sure that every day we bring breaking news to the room in terms of not just news from the standpoint, not just regurgitating a story, but being more insightful and digging deeper if we need to, or bringing information that nobody has seen before on many levels um and i think that's why why people who choose to watch kitv do choose to watch kitv um i don't know if you knew this too jay we were just recognized with a moral award for breaking news oh that's so great it was, Congratulations it, was, uh, on that. it was a it was a nice feather in a cap for the, the team here at kitv so we're very grateful for that recognition so that's great yeah. well thank you thank you jason jason how you are general manager uh, Janice Thanks, uh, Jin, Appreciate it. News, news director, you guys are terrific. You're terrific in what you do. You're terrific in your style and your thought process. And I really appreciate, you know, the, the, the way you've answered our questions. And you're also terrific in the fact that you came on ThinkTech. That is something. <laughs> and, you and you share. Our pleasure. <laughs> Thank nice. you, Jay, for including us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Aloha. Now, both of you, go wash your hands. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <Our bad. laughs> okay.